Keeping the Peace, Defensive Handgun Training for Women. And this week we're going to be talking about all of the variables that need to be considered when choosing a quality holster. I'm going to go through some various points that I have here. And there are other things that you might think about for comfort's sake, but I'm going to talk about things that make it a safe holster. It's something that's going to be good for working with, not only in training, but in just day-to-day -day carry for self-defense. Here's some of the things to think about. Number one, does it secure the gun? If you go about, I don't know if, if your state is an a open carry state, but the, ours is. In Kentucky, people open carry pretty frequently. And you get to kind of observe the holsters that people choose. And I've seen some people with holsters where when they walk through a store, for instance, the gun just sort of flops around. It's not really secured to the body. I've seen a couple that I'm pretty sure I could just pluck right out of the holster and the person would be completely unaware. So that's the first thing to consider. Does the holster secure the gun to the body? Okay, first thing to think about. Number two, does it protect the trigger? And I'm going to show you a clip here of what I mean when I say protect the trigger. I'm talking con conceal or cover the entire trigger guard area. But what I wanted to show here was the trigger guard protection. The entire trigger guard is not covered with the Nemesis. You can see that there's a little bit of space there. Um, anytime you're going to carry a gun in your pocket, it's best to not carry anything else in that pocket. But this would be an example of a way for something to possibly get down into that trigger guard area because it's not completely protected. If I were going to put this in my pocket, which I'm not, but if I were going to, I would want to find a pocket holster that completely covered the trigger guard area. I would want this to snug all the way up to the grip area. So that's just a personal preference, safety-wise. Does the holster maintain the orientation of the handgun? This is part of the first step, which was securing the gun to the body. If the holster is securing the gun to the body properly, then orientation maintenance will be the same all the time, which ensures the next thing, grip acquisition. In order to take a grip on my handgun and for it to be the exact same every single time, I need to make sure that that holster is maintaining the orientation of that gun on my body, or if you're carrying it in some type of a handbag, it needs to maintain orientation in the handbag at all times, so that every time you go for a grip, it is both possible and consistent. And that's something that you're going to want to train through with various carry options. And the proper holster makes a big difference when it comes to that. So is grip acquisition possible and consistent? And that comes from the orientation of the handgun being maintained by a good secure holster. This is a comfort issue. Um, but it also will help, it will lend itself to whether or not you carry on a daily basis. Is the weight of the handgun distributed evenly and widely on the belt line? And I have found that the more widely the weight is distributed, then the more comfortable that handgun is going to be on your body and the more snugly it's going to fit to the body. And that's important for concealment. If you're going to be concealing with an overgarment, if the handgun flops out away from the body like this, then it's not going to be nearly as easy to conceal. It needs to hug to the body. So you need to find on your particular body where is the perfect spot to snug that gun in and then get the proper um, belt and holster to make that happen. And both of those things are components. Retention. Does the holster retain the handgun? Um, there are different types of retention. If you get a cloth holster, it's probably not going to have any retention. The gun's probably just going to be riding in it, sort of like a pouch. Okay, But if you get molded holsters, whether they be leather or kydex, either one, you're going to have natural retention from the molding of the holster because it's been molded to your specific handgun. Then you have further retention where you have devices that you have to press and things like that. All of the holsters that I have are natural retention from the holster being molded to the gun 
And then once you have that molded holster on a belt snugged into your body, then you also have additional retention from the belt holding it to your body. And that holster actually snugs around your body and puts extra tension on the gun to keep it from just falling out. And a way that I like to test retention when I get a new holster is jump. Jump and run with that holster system on. And if your equipment bounces around, then either it's not cinched down tightly enough or the holster doesn't fit the belt properly or it's just the wrong rig for you. Um, and there's so many variables to think about here. But in the beginning when I first started concealed carrying, I tried a lot of different holsters before I found systems that actually worked for me. And I have two or three, maybe four systems that work really well for me now. But it took a long time to get there. It took a lot of different holsters, a lot of different belts trying. And I'll be real honest, in the beginning I did not purchase a gun belt for over a year. I tried using all these different belts. I tried going to local tax shops and buying um, what were quality belts to hold up pants, but are not sufficient for holding up a gun. And what I found was they, even though they were thick leather, like some of them two-ply leather sewn together, which is pretty thick, they just softened up so quickly. And what ended up happening was the holster would start this way with a new belt. And by the time I'd worn it for a month, this entire holster and the weight of that gun was actually sagging away from the body. And not only does that make it pretty well impossible to conceal, it also makes it not consistent for grip acquisition, so it's unsafe for me. If I go to get a grip on my weapon and it's in a different location, that's a huge problem. It should be in the exact same place every time so that I'm memorizing my muscle memory is working for me. If I'm having to go find it and it's sagging away from my body, that's a huge problem. It can also get caught on things, like when you reach up. If your gun's sagging away from your body, your clothes are kind of going to probably rest in behind the gun rather than stay on top. So that's a huge concern. If any part of your gun is sagging away from the body, your clothes are going to get all caught up in it. Um, and other things can get caught up in it too, like if you were bending down under something and raised up, if your gun's sticking out, it could catch. So you need everything to be really pulled in tightly to the body. So the next thing fits the belt and the body. So if you have a holster with a two inch belt loop or belt slot, then you need a two inch belt. Um, if you have an inch and a half wide belt in a two inch slot on a holster, you're gonna have all kinds of slop and movement and it's not gonna be good. It's not going to be comfortable, and I don't think it's safe because it's not going to maintain things. Uh, you're not going to have the maintenance that we're talking about of the orientation. Grip acquisition is going to be changing because things are going to change places. Um, also, if the belt doesn't fit the holster slot, you could have that entire holster changing not only orientation but locations. It could be sliding around and changing to different locations. So, big concern. firm mouth for reholstering, specifically if you're going to be doing training. If you're going to be doing training where you're coming in and out and in and out of the holster, you need to make sure that the mouth of the holster is firm so that you're not required to use your support hand to open the holster in order to get the gun back in. Because if you're doing that, then you're breaking the big gun rule or you're pointing the muzzle at something you don't want to destroy. And I know you don't want to destroy your support hand. So this is an example of a holster like that. This is an 8 Tactical. Um, there's a lot of good things going around on the internet about these. I just got it. You can tell I've never even really trained with it at all. But as soon as I got it, I realized it wouldn't be a holster I could train with. Um, it might be comfortable for wearing all day if I didn't plan to come out of the holster. And there are days like that. But most days I'm doing, doing some training throughout the day too. So um, although this might be really comfortable just for wearing, this would not be something you would train with because there's no way you're going to reholster this or without using a support hand to pull it open or just removing it completely from the pants, holstering the gun, and then trying to manage that whole thing back down in your pants. Um, that's a little complicated when you're trying to do a lot of repetition. So, um, although this is an extremely well-made holster, it's very nice leather with a suede on the back, very comfortable, everything's really well sewn, and I think it would be really comfortable for just wearing. This isn't something you would use for training. Um, so that's just a thought. So these are our things that we're thinking about. It secures the gun to the body. 
the trigger is completely protected. It maintains the orientation of the handgun, which ensures grip acquisition is both possible and consistent. It distributes the weight evenly and widely on the belt for comfort and to snug it into the body for easy concealment. It also provides retention, whether that be natural retention from being molded to the gun or some type of device, uh, like a push button on a Serpa, like a Blackhawk Serpa. And then the belt and the holster need to fit one another. And I'm going to go on and say you need to buy a gun belt. Buying a, a pants belt or just a belt intended for holding up your pants is not sufficient for holding up the weight of your gun. You need to invest in a good gun belt, and I'm going to show you a couple of the ones that I use in a second. And the last one is a firm mouth for reholstering. So I'm actually going to take you off the tripod, and I'm going to show you some of the things that I have that I use on a frequent basis. Okay, so here are some of the holsters that I have. Um, some of these I use on a very frequent basis, and some not. This system here was made by D.M. Bullard in Texas, and this is for my Springfield EMP. And when it's holstered, it looks like this. So you can see that it completely covers the entire trigger guard area. It also really hugs my body. You can see it's been used quite a bit. It really hugs into the body well. And I actually bought his entire system, so it came with a belt that fits perfectly on the loops or the slots, and also the magazine carrying systems the same way. The only thing I do not like about this system is the sweat guard on the magazine carrier is so high that it makes it difficult to access new magazines for um, speed and emergency reloads. So that's the only thing that I would change about this. I've thought about cutting it myself, but it's I just hate to ruin the finish that he made, so I have not changed that. And I would call this moderate as far as the width of the distribution of the weight on the belt line. This system is more comfortable to me. Um, this is a Blade Tech gun belt. Um, and it's much harder than the DM Bullard. It's a much harder leather. It has stayed hard over time, and I've worn it actually a lot more than the DM Bullard. It's way harder. So it actually helps to support that weight even better. And this is a UBG regulator holster also for the Springfield EMP. And when it's inserted into the holster, you can see that, yes, it does completely cover the trigger guard. And you'll also see that the distribution of the weight is much wider. This is the DM Bullard. And the UBG distributes that weight an extra at least inch in either direction on the belt. So when I'm wearing this system, I notice the weight of the gun much less so than with the other one. And you can tell the way it's curved, it's actually molded to my body um, very well. I've been using this holster for a couple of years, and it works really nicely. This would be an option. I don't prefer it, but it would be an option. If you were looking for extra retention, there are holsters out there with what we call a thumb break, like this one, and it would just require you to use the thumb in behind as you draw to break that open as an extra retention device. Um, this one's made by Galco. I don't prefer these. I have it, but I don't prefer them. For training purposes, going, you know, reholstering is just a big nightmare to me. So I just don't prefer that. I like the open topped holsters. But when you do choose an open-topped holster, if you're going to carry it behind the body, you need to be extra aware of your backside. You need to be aware of who's back there at all times. And you'll probably find yourself posturing much more intensely than you would um, with a holster that carries it toward the front of the body. This is um, a Galco underwrap. When I'm going to wear an underwrap, I actually use a smaller gun. This is the Sig P238. I'm not wearing this currently, so it is unloaded. When I place it into the holster, I have to be extra careful because we were talking earlier about reinforced mouths make it safe for holstering. Um, that's what I mean, like this one. I could go into this holster without using any other body parts to open anything up. It's reinforced. This, however, is not. This is soft. And when it's on the body, it's also drawn into your skin. So reholstering is an issue because you find yourself using your support hand to open the holster up so that the gun can be put in. 
Um, so what I find myself doing for safety purposes, I don't want any of my fingers in front of my muzzle. Even though I am going to be safe with the trigger finger on the hand that's holding the gun, I still don't want my fingers in front of the muzzle. So I will actually open the holster this way and go in beside my fingers. I don't want my fingers in front of that. So be real careful about that if you're using a soft mouth holster. This would be an example of one. Also, sticky holsters, which are great um, if you're looking to wear your, your gun with some fairly tight jeans, but you don't want to wear a belt. These do actually stick very well to the skin and garments, but they are soft mouth, and the since they're inside the waistband, you're gonna find that your pants close the holster. So you'll find yourself in this position where you're opening the holster like this to reholster. For these situations, I prefer to take the entire holster out of the pants, and I actually will open it up this way and bring the gun in from underneath my hand. That makes sure that I don't have anything in front of the muzzle. Then once it's in this, you know, once it's completely covered and safe, then that's a good time to stick that whole thing into your pants. That's fairly easy to do, and I do actually train with this because every now and then I do use this. So I, I do make sure that I train with every different carry system I could possibly use on any frequent basis at all. And even though I might do this 0.2% of the time, I still don't want to do it without knowing that I could get to it in a hurry um, and safely. So that's something to think about too. This is the Nate Tactical Holster that I mentioned earlier. I just ordered this. I've only had it for about a month. Um, and as soon as I got it, I knew I couldn't train with it. But this is what I was talking about. If I wanted to holster on this one, if it were in side of my waistband, there's no way that this is going to happen. This elastic kind of folds down on itself. Um, it folds into the trigger area also. So you pretty much have to have the holster out of your pants in order to put the gun in safely. And you have to also be very careful about what I've noticed is the trigger guard area it wants to bend down underneath when you, when you put it in. It wants to bend down underneath. So I find myself having to actually really make sure that nothing's folded into that trigger guard area. Then you would have to put this entire thing into your pants. So you're going to get annoyed pretty quickly if you're trying to do any unholstering, reholstering exercises. Okay, a couple of other belts that I've used in the past that have worked fairly well for me. This is a 511 tactical gun belt. They're fairly thick. I've used this quite a bit and it's still good and stiff. Um, they are so thick, they actually sort of have a padded type feel to them. Um, so they're a little more noticeable as far as bulk on your belt line. For ladies, uh, we tend to not like a lot of bulk on the belt line. But that's just something that I noticed with this one. I feel a lot more bulky with this on than I do with the Blade-Tec. Blade-Tec is much more slim and actually harder. The Tactical Tailor instructor's belts are great. Um, but they are very wide. So that's, with ladies' pants, I find that all of my belt loops won't accommodate this belt. Um, plus it has quite a bit of weight in the rigging system in the front, so you really feel this belt. But it also supports the weight of the gun very well. It's got some type of a, I think, Kydex inner uh, piece with the weaving sewn around it, so it's extremely firm. It doesn't give at all. Um, it actually works works very well. Um, so I think that just about covers it. I don't want to leave you sitting down there looking at my holster collection while I'm trying to talk to you. Um, so if you have any questions about the holster systems that I use or things that I've used in the past that have worked or haven't worked, I'd be happy to answer any of your questions. I know this can be a tedious process when you first start carrying your handgun, trying to figure out how in the world you're going to strap this hard metal thing to your body, make it comfortable enough to carry all the time, and make it safe enough to be able to carry it about in your daily life and not have things falling out or popping out of your clothing and all that sort of thing. Um, there are a lot of good videos online specifically about women and canting your gun. That makes a big difference too. Um, Mrs. Mr. and Mrs. Authority did a great video on canting her revolver. And that's a that's a big issue with, with ladies. We have to take advantage of curvy areas because that's where you're going to hide your gun. Okay, Basically, that's, that's what's going on here. You're looking for a curvy area and you're looking for a way to strap something hard and straight into a curvy area. 
and that can be complicated, but with some persistence and determination and creativity, it can be done, and it can be done well. Um, but canting the gun is a big deal. I find myself liking to cant it so that the grips of the handgun lay into my ribs. That works best for me because it's utilizing that curve that I have. It's basically filling in that curve. What you will find, ladies, is that wearing your gun makes you look thicker. <laughs> you kind of lose a little bit of, you know, of the waistline, which, you know, you can see that this is my body here. And then by the time you get done with all of my equipment, it's way out here. So I'm gaining an inch and a half probably on each side. And in the beginning, you know, when I first started carrying a gun, I didn't really like that idea. Um, but your safety is more of a concern than your figure. And you have to kind of just be willing to give that up just a little bit. Um, and that's just, maybe that's part of getting older. You just kind of start caring about that maybe a little bit less. But do take advantage of curved areas and try to just find something that will cinch it in tightly to your body. You want it to be touching you. You don't want anything to be hanging out. And again, if the, you know, if the grip area of your gun is sticking out away from your body, bowing out, that's when pieces of clothing are going to get caught in behind it. For instance, when you reach your arms up or if you were to bend over, that's going to happen. So think about finding a holster system that cinches the top part of that gun into the body. Um, and a lot of that's going to be just equipment and gear. So some of the big companies that I use and love are Blatech. Their belts are wonderful. I don't particularly use their holsters, but that's just because I don't happen to have them. But I know they also make good holsters. But Blatech, great belts. Tactical Tailor, great instructor belts. Um, D and Bullard, great hand tool leather work if you're looking for a leather holster. Um, Galco Under Wraps if you're looking for any type of belly band. That's the only one that I would recommend. There's a lot of different ones out there, but they're not all created equally. The ones that are made of all elastic with no leather holster are not nearly as supportive of your gun. So you're going to find that things bounce when you walk, and that does not feel good. It's uncomfortable. Plus, it hurts your concealment. If you're carrying in a belly band and you've got something under your shirt and it's bouncing around, that's going to draw attention. So you don't really want that. Um, StickyHolsters.com, if you're looking for something with no belt system at all, just something that will stick into the clothes, those actually do work very well. Um, belt is always better, but there are some women that just really want to carry a gun and just have no desire to wear a belt. They just don't like the idea of wearing a belt. Keep in mind, if you do use a sticky holster system, you do need some retention from the waistband of your pants. You can't just wear loosey-goosey pants and expect your holster to stay there because it could end up coming out the bottom of the leg. So, Also, with skirts, I wouldn't recommend sticky holsters because you don't have anything underneath to catch it if something does slip. So um, you definitely want to use pants with your sticky holsters. Um, trying to think if there's anything else that I wanted to cover. Oh, if you're looking for a good way to test your holsters, every time I get a new holster, the first thing I want to do is run and jump with it. Okay? I should be able to take off sprinting and not have any worry at all about anything falling out or changing location so that when I go for that grip it's still in the same place. Also, um, like for instance I work in the nursery with the toddler sometimes at church, I should be able to roll around on the floor and not worry about anything popping out. Okay, So you should be able to basically do cartwheels and your gun shouldn't fall out. So that's the kind of retention you're looking for, that's the kind of good equipment that you're looking for. Um, another great way to test it if you have access to a trampoline, go jump on a trampoline. If you can jump on a trampoline with your kids for 20 minutes and nothing falls out or moves, then you're in good shape. You've got a good system. And that's one of the great ways that I, my brother has a trampoline. And I've, I've actually tested quite a few holsters on there, and I'm not even sure they knew I was doing that. But um, it's a great way to see if anything's going to move. So if you have access to that, even one of those little exercising trampolines would work fine. Or just jumping, jump rope, um, something like that. I'm not a gymnast, so I can't do you know, cartwheels and things like that. I would kill myself if I tried to do that. So. Um, I hope that these ideas have helped you, and if you've got questions, again, please feel free to email me or put a message down below, and I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have. And if you live near me, and you're trying to find a holster, and you'd like to try mine first, feel free. Come over here and try them all on, and, well, tell me first before you come. Um, we'll schedule something. So, hope it helps. Have a great day. God bless.